I've seen a lot of community sentiment about the setup quest lately, so I decided I'd chime in and give some advice to hopefully make it easier to complete. Setup is one of those quests that requires you to build your gear around specific requirements, which means if you don't like the gear, then tough luck. Those requirements are, get 15 kills with any MP series shotgun while wearing a Yushanka and a scav vest on customs. Now this might not sound too bad at first, shotguns are pretty strong in Tarkov since it's mostly a one tap headshot game. You also have insanely good ammo like Flashat and AP20 which has super high pen. And it's on a map that has some really good spots that favor shotguns, so why is the community so upset about it? While the quest sounds really simple, I'm afraid there's more outside factors that play into it. For starters, you can't wear any sort of protective gear for your head. The Yushanka blocks face masks and helmets, meaning you're one tap to basically any ammo in the game depending on what distance they're at. Get unlucky and a scab decides to want to headshot you, while well, you're dead, no helmet to protect you there. Another issue that arises in this quest is that it's at level 18 very early on in the game, which means a lot of people are going to be doing this quest at the same time. This means you're all going to be in the same places, which in tandem means you're going to be able to predict how people are going to play. The gear that's required for this quest is plenty more expensive than it normally is as well. Yushanka's alone were like 60k plus earlier this wipe, which is just fucking crazy for something that doesn't give any benefits and makes you look homeless. Same thing for the scav vest, which is almost as bad as not wearing a rig at all. Setup in the past was a good bit later into the quest line, which meant the better players would knock it out first, then the funnel of players who were just behind them would trickle in and complete it after. This would make it so the market wasn't totally inflated for as long as it is right now. On top of that, you still have to build your shotgun, which usually isn't very expensive, but if you don't want to blow your eardrums out because Tarkov is realistic when shooting your shells, then you're going to throw a suppressor on it. Depending on how many people want suppressors, these can also be very expensive. Alright, so let's ignore all the cost of the shitty gear we have to wear. What can we do to make this easier? Well, for starters, you can build your shotgun however you want. This means you aren't fully restricted on how you want to build into. I'd recommend building into ergonomics since vertical recoil doesn't really matter on shotguns, I think. Also, keep in mind the length of your barrel. If you want to play super close quarters, like in dorms, a long barrel is going to definitely hit some corners when trying to peek. It's gotten me killed multiple times in the past and I wouldn't be surprised if the same thing happened to you. I personally prioritize the ergonomics over barrel length, but it's just personal preference. But at the same time, you want to make sure you aren't running a small mag size. I try to always run the 8 shallow mag since if I whiff some shots, I don't have to reload mid-fight. Reloading in a close quarters fight almost always means the enemy will push and try to kill you. We also get to decide what kind of body armor we want to wear, although this doesn't matter a ton since we can just get one tap to the head anyways. And with the current armor hitboxes and armor rework, it's kind of messy so it's up to you. I prefer to run armor with level 4 plating so I don't get one tap to the chest by random bullets, but run whatever you're comfortable with. We also have to pick what kind of ammo we want to run. Flashat and AP20 are by far the best, but we are way under leveled to be buying that without spending a couple bands of shell. So our next best options are going to be the 50 BMG and Piranha shells. The pen on this ammo is pretty good, sitting at 26 and 24 respectively, which in comparison to Flashat and AP20's 31 and 37 isn't too far off. This ammo is a lot cheaper and much easier to obtain. Slugs like Pulava 6U are viable if you want to play farther back, but I don't really ever think slugs are worth running besides AP20 since Buckshot is most of the time just straight up better. Now that you finally got your loadout on, it's time to finally go in and get those player kills. In this next section, I'm going to show you how to play off a spawn, hotspots, and how to engage your fights with a shotgun. This quest will probably take you a good amount of raids, so please try to knock out some other quests while you're at it so you aren't bored to death. Alright, so first we're going to start off with spawns. Um, if you know all the player spawns on the map, like by heart, you're going to have a very, very easy time getting this quest done because you can just play off of spawns and pinches, kind of like just like Lighthouse. Uh, I made a video on that earlier, this wipe, so if you want to check that out, go for it. But uh, that's all about Punisher. So I'm going to start off with this right circle. Usually you're going to get this spawn right in the forest, uh, right by the cabin extract, or whatever it's called, trailer park, whatever. Uh, and then usually people will spawn like over on this side, where I'm circling right here. So if you get lucky, these players might push back into Big Red, which means you can push up and around into the forest or up into the uh, compound. Remember, you have a shotgun, though, so try not to stay on the open. This area isn't as good to get your shotgun kills in, so I'm not going to fully recommend playing spawns here. Um, but just, just make sure that you're watching your spawn because you're always, almost every spawn on this map and in the game in general, there's going to be someone near you. So it's not as bad as something like Ground Zero or Lighthouse, but um, you can still definitely take advantage of it. Uh, if you get this spawn, you could also book it across Land Bridge. There will probably be someone spawning at the Crack House and RUF spawn as well. Uh, so they'll probably be in crack house looting, which means you can play around outside. Uh, don't let them push out through the front door or the back. And, you know, you'll have the people at old guys pushing into fort, uh, which I call stronghold. So if I get the names mixed up, that's what I mean. Um, but what we're going to do is our, our pinches in, in Tarkov, you're going to start on one side of the map. You're running to the other, right? So our best areas to pinch people are going to be dorms, uh, skeleton, which is uh, what I call right here. This is skeleton, uh, construction construction stronghold and crack house 
Remember, RUAF is an extract that is always on now. Uh, it, used to, it used to not be, it used to be a limited extract, uh, kind of like Smuggler's Boat down here. Um, another pinch right here is going to be the land bridge and the bridge itself. Uh, sorry, the metal junk bridge and the uh, the normal bridge. So just be ready to pinch people there. Remember, because people are going to be crossing. Everybody has to cross through the middle of the map um, unless you get like the RUAF spawn and you just hit Stronghold and get out, which still you're in the middle of the map. So my my favorite spot to fight is construction right here. Early game, if you are no life and day one you hit level 18 or day two you hit level 18, right? You hit, you get set up. So construction is by far going to be the best spot for you to sit. Nobody needs to go dorms yet except for grabbing the pocket watch. So you could camp second story right here. Uh, third story dorm, second floor. You could camp that, that key. But I'm going to recommend sitting construction because people are going to have to open this up anyways. Is it scummy? Yeah. But um, that's always an option. I like to camp construction not because of the quest here. But because if I get this spawn, the smuggler's boat spawn right here, uh, actually, let me change the color so that no, I don't I don't mess up with the, with the red one. So if I get this spawn right here, this purple, if I get this spawn, I'm always pushing straight to construction. I'm never going dorms. I'm always pushing to construction because construction is going to have, it sounds crazy, but construction is going to have a, a more consistent flow of people than dorms. That might sound stupid, right? Dorms is the hot spot. You go to you go to customs, you're thinking, oh, there's gonna be fighting at dorms always, right? Well, if you get a lobby with people who aren't who don't want to fight in dorms, everybody's gonna avoid dorms, right? Which means everybody's gonna push through construction skeleton, stronghold, blah blah blah. In the lobbies where you get people fighting in dorms, anyways, um, you're still going to have people pushing through construction regardless. Because one, they're gonna have to push through construction or through the forest on the left side to get into dorms itself. Or um, you're going to people who spawn there and just go straight to it, right? So though I like the camp construction the most, and then I move around through Skeleton. This is this is also probably the biggest, mo like, biggest consistent hotspot on the map. You've got Rashala spawn is back in, in Stronghold again. You've got people pushing through Skeleton all the time. You've got the Bunkhouse key right there. Crackhouse is super good for Soleil was early wipe. Pocket Watch quest. REWF is right here. You got Old Gas, which has a bunch of scavs. Uh, you got the Extract in Stronghold again. But yeah, I could go on and on. Um, so personally, I'm going to recommend construction. Um, but play off of your spawns and what you're most comfortable with, just trying to get caught out in the open. Um, some of the iffy spots, I know I just mentioned old gas, but the only reason old gas is kind of iffy is depending on how you challenge it. If you challenge it from the warehouse four side, um, the only way you can really get over this sidewall right here, which for the other side is way easier, the stronghold side, it's very, very easy. Um, the only way you can really jump over from the warehouse four side is either glitching into the tree, which isn't really a glitch. You just jump in the middle of it and jump backwards out, or you know, turn around and jump out over the wall. Or uh, if you're on the, the the railway, you can jump and like land on the corner of the wall that's sticking through and jump over. That's like that's a little too advanced though. I'm not gonna even like tell you to do that. So pushing from warehouse four side, one, if you walk into the old gas area, you're out in the open, right? You're gonna get shot. You're probably gonna die. You're using a shotgun. Um, but if you're on the other side, pushing old gas is probably a better idea because one, you can hold this wall and jump over if you need to flank if you're playing with a teammate. And two, they have nowhere to run except back to where they came from. So old gas is kind of a, it's like a 50-50 spot to play. Uh, new gas in general, bad spot to play. You're out in the open. There is almost nowhere to run that would net you some cover. There's that little forest right next to old gas and the forest up on the hill. Um, but uh, Rashala can spawn here again. So just be careful of that. Um, any open area, so this entire side of the map, terrible to play. Um, the the run from dorms to smugglers is kind of iffy too. You have this hill that people like to sit on top of sometimes. So be careful of that. I'm actually going to change back to red. Um, sorry, it might have been a little hard to see before. But um, we're going to change. Uh, we're going to go back to uh, smugglers boat. You don't want to. You don't want to try to sit around there. And then. Um, Crossing to Big Red is probably the worst area in general, like actually the worst area, because there's literally no cover and you're out in the open and people can just sit up on either side and snipe you, right? So just be careful about crossing to Big Red. If you're going to cross, take Junk Bridge or the Land Bridge, because at least there's a little, or sorry, the Normal Bridge, because there's at least a little cover there. Um, or, you, you know, if you're going at nighttime, that's not a big deal. Um, another thing I'm going to talk about is right hand peeking versus left hand peeking. So BSG did add left hand peeking, which is very nice, very nice. Um, but only sometimes. When using a, a shotgun, the barrel is so long most of the time. The barrel is very long that you're gonna you're gonna be touching walls a lot. 
And one thing they haven't ironed out yet with left hand peek is that when your left hand, when your gun touches something, like a wall or like a bed or whatever, if it touches something and your gun wants to get pulled to your chest, instead of getting pulled to your chest, you'll just swap back to right hand peek. And then whenever your game thinks you're good again to go back to left hand, it will. So middle of the fight, your left hand swinging someone, you accidentally clip the door. All right, well, whatever, I'm just gonna back up. Your gun's gonna swap back, then swap back again to left hand peek. Uh, and it can get you killed. It's gotta be killed too many times to count. I don't even try to left hand peek anymore, even though I think it's useful uh, just because of that. So be careful when using left hand peek close range. Um, it, it could get you killed. And especially if you're playing dorms, if you're a big dorms guy, don't left hand peek at all. I'm just gonna recommend doing the old right hand peek or jumping across halls and then playing off of a of default right hand peek. Um, and obviously this is another very important tip is play close range. Yes, you're using buckshot and realistically buckshot Buckshot can map people, but uh, it has to be nerfed in video games because Buckshot is just straight up overpowered. Slugs, if you can play a little farther away, but I think your close range options are going to be once again dorms. Um, not this area out in the open of the warehouse, but everything else besides it. The USEC area is really good. Um, the Stronghold area is pretty good as well. Big Red in the trailer cabin itself, not anything out here. Uh, and construction and skeleton. So... Just be careful of that. Make sure you're playing close range. And you would think Dorms is the best, but at the same time, Dorms has three levels and the audio on this game is still shit. Uh, not as bad as it used to be, like where vertical audio used to literally not exist on Shoreline at all. That was terrible. But um, just be careful with Dorms. I, I prefer not to go Dorms at all, unless I'm there first. So, And then my final final tip again is going to be play your chokeholds and pinches. Your teammate, teammates are going to be very useful here. You can have... One, one very common pinch I'll do is people who are coming from the left side of the map across to RUAF right here, people are always going to enter through here or here. I, I almost never see anybody come from Smuggler's Boat straight to RUAF uh, just because you're covering so much of the vertic like the verticality of the map at once, you're going to have a higher chance of running into someone running straight up and down the map than you will running left or right. So uh, they'll either hit Smugglers and things go straight across, maybe go up through bridge, uh, and very rarely will they ever go straight to RUAF. So what you want, what you'll do here is you'll have your teammates maybe sitting at RUAF a little closer, or you can be sitting there. The other person will be sitting around the roadblock, uh, not in the open because someone's sniping across and they're just going to die. Oh, this person sucks. So very, very common pinch is you have them push pinch through here. If they decide to retreat, you can push through this wall, um, watch the, the uh, hallway. If they're running away this way, you, your teammate can also push around through here uh, and get in through there. So... Play your pinches, try to play with other people, and you know, it'll work really well if you're both doing setup. You can ditch each other's gear if you die. Um, you can also, you know, bring gear back into raid. It's not, it's not, you know, your normal teammate stuff. Try to have good comms. I'm not going to recommend more than like three people to do this just because I personally don't like doing anything above three people to stack minimum or maximum for the most part. Um, but three, three people very rarely will I run three stacks um, unless they know what they're doing. So, but yeah, I think that's about it. Just quick summary, TLDR. Um, player spawns and pinches. You want to make sure you're playing as a team if you're playing with people, and you want to make sure you're playing off a of spawn. Playing off a of spawn kills, if you know the map like the back of your hand, you will succeed way faster than everyone else. Make sure you know the spawns. Um, and remember, just because all of these yellow is very important. I, sh I should have I should have said this earlier. Very important. Um, just because all of these arrows means there are player spawns here doesn't mean that if you get a spawn there someone else can spawn right next to you what that means is it's like a pool of spawns right so like this is kind of like one pool of spawns uh and like this is another pool so if you get let's say you get one spawn down here right bottom left of the map nobody else no other team is going to spawn right here that's just not going to happen very rarely i think ever will that happen but it might not it might literally be impossible for that stuff to happen except for maps like lighthouse which is a whole nother story i've already ranted about that the last layouts video I made, whatever. Um, so that's that's a very important detail I missed. So I'll make sure to like make a chapter or whatever, say important, whatever. So just remember to play your spawns. Uh, this pool though could push like this USEC pool because when you get this spawn down here, someone is always gonna spawn at USEC, right? That's what I mean by play and know your spawns. You're not gonna know exactly where they're spawning over here most of the time, one of those four, but you're gonna know that they're spawning in that general circle. So um, the next one are hotspots. Play construction, skeleton, and stronghold. Um, big red inside the building and trailer park. Dorms and the USEC buildings and, and warehouse four. Uh, this whole bottom side of the map 
it's kind of just useless. I would never recommend pushing through there. I would ignore this whole area. So um, remember to right hand peek over left hand peeking unless you're farther away. If you're going to clip your gun or if you're at, at a risk of clipping your gun, don't left hand peek. It could get you killed. Um, play close range. Let them push you and get the jump on them. Now, I'm not saying sit completely still and play like a rat the whole game. You could. That's completely fine. If you like that play style, go for it. I personally find it super boring and I don't like it at all. Uh, I personally hate dying to like that. It, it make, the game is not fun when that happens. So uh, I try to actually have a fight, um, but let the enemy push you. So what you could do is you could bait a CMS. You could bait your painkillers. Um, sure, it might it may take up a use, uh, use of it, but it's worth getting the kill over a 1 out of 15 of your um, ibuprofen, right? And then finally, play your chokeholds, and teammates are very, very helpful. Play chokeholds like RUAF, not necessarily extract camp, um, I mean, it's kind of on the line, so I'll let you judge if this is an extra camp or not. Uh, play, play chocolate like RUAF, um, and like this bottom side of the map, uh, struggler, um, sorry, smuggler's boat, the old guest choke point, and like maybe crossing over to the bridges, but I wouldn't recommend that personally. So that's it. I'm going to roll out the outro. If you have any comments, uh, questions or inquiries, hit me up in the discord, join my stream. Streams are kind of inconsistent right now, but. Just let me know. You got sources to, to hit me up. Thanks, guys. Thanks for watching the video, and let me know if it helped by leaving a like, comment, or subscribe. I might be at 1,000 subscribers by the time I drop this video, so thanks ahead of time, and I got a video coming out for that later this week. Once again, if you need any help, feel free to stop by my streams on Twitch or YouTube, or you can join up in my Discord where you can reach me whenever you want. Just give me some time to finish up what I'm doing, and I'll get to as soon as I can. There's also the YouTube Members Program if you want to join that. The only benefits are some badges for the streams, a cool Discord role, and maybe early access to videos if I decide to post them early enough. Just remember this is a subscription based model, so please cancel whenever you're done supporting the channel. Once again, thanks for a thousand subscribers, thanks for watching, and hopefully I'll see you around.